everyone, March the 7th, 2023 today. Welcome to another short video courtesy of investingsuccess.ca. I've been doing some reading lately and I've come across an author in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Professor Vaslav Simel. Uh, Dr. Simel is, is originally from Czechoslovakia in, uh, in the late 60s. Um, when the Soviet Union decided they were going to interfere with the geopolitics in Czechoslovakia, there was a huge brain drain. A lot of young academics left the country, made their way to North America. Dr. Simmel ended up completing his PhD in the United States, and after that made his way to University of Manitoba, where for many, many years he taught in the Department of Geography. Go to your local library. Ask your librarian if he or she can find you some books by Dr. Václav Simmel. Some of the most amazing reading that you will ever do. He pulls no punches. Um, he basically points a finger at uh, renewable energy, um, points a finger at a, at a lot of things we take for granted in this world, and he really tears them apart and looks at the energy, uh, the efficiency of it all, and you read his books and you will have a very different view of energy and a very different view of our world. He argues that there are four pillars that support our industrial society. The pillars are plastics, cement, steel, and ammonia fertilizer. <clears throat> and without these four pillars, uh, our industrialized society falls apart. In particular, without ammonia fertilizer, we physically cannot grow enough food to feed 8 billion people on the planet. And I'm going to argue that the way we are going, I think there's almost a fifth pillar we can add, lithium. Without lithium, you don't have your lithium ion batteries. Without the batteries, you don't have electric cars. That's another story for another time. Let's focus on ammonia fertilizer. Here's a picture in this slide of an industrial facility in Medicine Hat, Alberta. It's owned by an American company called CF Industries. This is where CF Industries makes uh, synthetic ammonia fertilizer and sells it to farmers across Western Canada. Uh, it has a number of these plants <clears throat> across North America. So what is it? Well, if you were to come across uh, some granular white material like is shown in this slide, that is um, synthetic ammonia fertilizer. It's NH3, so a nitrogen atom with three hydrogen atoms appended to it. How is it made? Um, for that, we have to go back to our basic high school chemistry. Air that we breathe is 80% nitrogen, 20% oxygen. If you take some air in a refrigerated processing vessel and you super cool it down to extraordinarily low temperatures, you can cause the nitrogen and the oxygen to separate. Capture the nitrogen let the oxygen go. Now, the second part of the process, <clears throat> you're going to take natural gas. Natural gas is methane, CH4, carbon atom with four hydrogen atoms attached to it. You're going to use steam and thermal energy. You're going to separate the carbon from the hydrogen. You are now going to combine the hydrogen with that nitrogen that you got in the first part of the process. There is your NH3. There is your synthetic ammonia granular fertilizer. This whole process um, and its various stages is the Haber-Bosch process created by uh, German chemists Karl Bosch and Fritz Haber in 1909 in Germany. And both gentlemen were actually awarded uh, the Nobel Peace Prizes for chemistry in the 1930s. And looking back on all of it, <clears throat> without the Haber-Bosch process, without synthetic ammonia fertilizer, 
we would not be able to grow enough food to sustain 8 billion people on planet Earth. So really and truly, uh, Dr. Simmel is right. Synthetic ammonia fertilizer is a key pillar that supports our life on planet Earth. So, um, whether you are growing corn or soybeans or cereal grains, it doesn't matter. Farmers all over the world depend every year on nitrogen fertilizer. Okay? It is essential. How does it work? <clears throat> well, in the spring of the year, if you're driving around out in the country, you uh, quite commonly will see a tractor pulling a, a seed drill and there's a wagon that it's got in tow behind it. And the wagon is where you've got your seeds and your granular synthetic ammonia fertilizer. So the seeding device is going to put seeds and um, granules of fertilizer into the soil. Mother Nature is going to give a sprinkle of rain that's going to start the seeds germinating and growing. And as the plant starts to grow, it's going to absorb the nitrogen from the NH3 synthetic ammonia molecules. The nitrogen is stimulative to the metabolic processes in the plant. And 100 or 120 days later, you have got a fully mature crop of soybeans, corn, cereal grains, what have you. So between Canada and the United States, we produce about 20% of the granular nitrogen fertilizer in the world. Russia provides about 10%. China provides about 30% and the European Union about 10%. And there's a variety of other countries that provide lesser amounts. So take a look at these uh, flags here and tell me if there's a problem. <clears throat> well, yeah, there is. If you think Russia is going to continue supplying nitrogen fertilizer to the rest of the world, no. Think again. Russia is under enormous sanctions because of its misadventure into the Ukraine. They're not going to be supplying much of anything to anybody. China is going backwards. Take a look at the news any day of the week. Xi Jinping is an isolated, miserable little man. Just this morning, uh, he got rid of something like 5% of his bureaucrats. He doesn't want people telling him what to do. He's withdrawing into a corner. Do you think the world is going to embrace China and want to buy things from China? No, no, China's done. It's, it's going backwards. European Union, can they make fertilizer? Not anymore. The Nord Stream pipeline got blown up. The Nord Stream pipeline, was bringing natural gas from Russia into Germany, where it was being used in the Haberbosch process to make fertilizer. Nord Stream pipeline doesn't exist anymore. That gas is gone and it ain't coming back. Production of synthetic nitrogen fertilizer is shifting. It's gonna be focusing on North America, Canada and the US. And it's gonna be companies like CF Industries that stand to benefit. <clears throat> CF Industries started trading for the very first time August 11, 2005 on the New York Stock Exchange. The ticker symbol is CF. Here's the planets on that particular day. This is the first trade horoscope. I want you to look at this chart and I want you to tell me, can you see a pattern. I see two. And I'm going to show you one of them. Here it is. I call it the crisscross pattern, the hourglass pattern. <clears throat> it's got four corners to it, Sun, Node, Jupiter, Neptune. So when I see patterns like that in a first trade horoscope, the first question I have to ask is, 
what would happen if something like moon transited past each of those corners? Is that going to give me a reaction on a price chart? Can I use that to, to gauge entry and exit points in and out of a stock? Maybe. Let's take a look. Oh, and by the way, before I go any further, when I'm talking about these first trade horoscopes, they are always geocentric, not heliocentric. So if you're going to apply this uh, as part of your trading or investing, you're going to have to get your hands on some of the geocentric um, ephemeral data. It's available online. You can buy software programs. You can also go to your bookstore and order the new American ephemeris for the 21st century. Um, but you'll, you'll get the data in one way, shape, or form, and you're going to use it then in conjunction with the 2005 first trade horoscope for CF Industries. <clears throat> Here's a segment of a price chart going back to the middle of 2022. Um, July of 2022, the price of CF Industries had, had been declining. It stopped declining when it hit the 200-day moving average, which is the dashed line in the chart. But it also stopped for another reason. Moon was transiting past the Neptune point in that 2005 crisscross pattern in the horoscope. Price recovered, went from $80 up to $120, couldn't push any higher. How come? Moon was passing the sun location in that 2005 first straight horoscope. Price then declined, stopped just shy of the 200 day moving average. <clears throat> Why did it stop? Why didn't it keep going? Moon was passing the Jupiter point in that 2005 horoscope. <clears throat> Price uh, increased and in November of 2022 could not muster any more. How come? Moon was passing the node point in that 2005 horoscope. So you can see that the moon passing those critical corner points, um, very, very powerful tool to be using. Um, January 2023, price had declined back down to $80. It stopped declining because the moon was passing the sun point in that first trade horoscope. Now, since the beginning of 2023, the price of CF Industries really has just gone sideways within a channel up and down. So if you take a look at uh, the fact that it, it came from about $115 down to 80, in terms of Fibonacci ratios, what have we done? We have repeatedly recovered and bounced up against the 23.6% recovery. If we can break out of this sideways channel, the next stop is going to be $92.5. That's a 38% retracement. And if you can get through 38, you're well on your way to 100 bucks a share and maybe even 105. So what I'm doing is I've just been patiently waiting, watching the moon pass these points in the 2005 natal horoscope watching the price drift around in the sideways pattern. I'm watching the slow stochastic. I haven't got a buy signal yet, but I'm very, very close. When I see that stochastic getting above that upper boundary line, <clears throat> I know it's time to buy. Um, it'll get there. And, you know, the temptation is just to jump into the stock at any price. No. No, I'm going to wait till I get my buy signal and it's going to be confirmed by the moon passing one of these points in the natal horoscope. And then from there, away we go. And uh, before long, we'll get above the 200 day moving average and, and we'll keep going and money will be made, even if it's only on a couple hundred shares. I realize it's not a cheap stock to buy. Here's the hourly chart. I've been looking at it uh, today. We're down to $83.5. And what triggered this little move down in the past couple days? The moon was passing the natal sun point. 
on the 9th of March, a couple days from now, we're going to pass, the moon's going to pass natal Jupiter. Um, I'll know on the hourly chart if that is the bottom. And I think it very well could be. And I might just buy some there. And even if it only rebounds to the top of that sideways channel, that's going to be, you know, five, maybe six dollars of price gain. And even if I only have a couple hundred shares, that's fairly easy money. So I'm looking here for some sort of an entry point, and it's, uh, I think we're very, very close. <clears throat> I always look at the fundamentals and on CF Industries, it has a PE ratio of seven. It has a profit margin of 30%. Every farmer needs to put this stuff on his field every spring. No two ways about it. You have to do it. So CF Industries is a money maker. I always take a look uh, at how much free cash flow a company is generating. I take a look at how many shares it has outstanding. I calculate how much free cash flow per share. And then I say to myself, okay, if I want to buy a dollar of free cash flow, um, how many, uh, what do I have to buy? I effectively have to buy $5.50 worth of CF Industries stock to get a dollar of free cash flow. What do these three numbers really have in common? It's a cheap stock. Even at 80 some dollars, it's cheap. And this thing is, is gonna get going here again. And uh, it's gonna get back up over $100 a, a share. And I just wanna be part of it as it starts to make that move. And I'm gonna use my technical chart analysis and astrology to help me identify the entry point. Take a look at my website, investingsuccess.ca. I've got a number of letters that I do for subscribers. They all have a different flavor to them. And really all I'm doing in these letters is what I'm doing in these videos, showing you a company, showing you the stock chart, showing you the astrology, showing you how to identify entry and exit points using the chart analysis overlaid with things like Fibonacci ratios and the astrology. You want to learn more about astrology, get a copy of my almanac. Um, it's more of a, an educational tool than a predictive type of uh, tool. And once you start learning the basics of astrology, you're well on your way. You, you, you can, you almost don't need me anymore. You can, you can start using this stuff without me. Um, it's, it's not terribly hard to master. Uh, the book is available on Amazon, ebook format. Go to your local bookstore, ask your bookseller if they can get it for you. They can. You want to take a basic course on astrology? I've got one on udemy.com. Learn some of the basics. It's not terribly hard. I'm just about to come out with another book. It's called Follow the Trend. My editor is uh, finishing her final nitty gritty edits on it as of today. Um, the motivation for this book um, came earlier in 2022 when I realized that a lot of people are getting sucked into um, buying meme stocks, um, making investment decisions based on Robinhood, Reddit, um, based on fat bald guys on television yelling, bye, 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 booyah, booyah. Um, there's no need for that. The book tells you how to identify the trend on a given stock and how, how to follow the trend, when to buy, when to sell. And it, uh, it's, it's a powerful book and it's, uh, it's a powerful tool you're gonna wanna have on your desk beside you. All right, that's it for me. So <clears throat> CF Industries, New York, ticker symbol, CF, granular fertilizer. Every farmer needs it. It's a money maker and it's not an $80 stock. It's going higher. Um, watch it, keep an eye on it, and uh, keep your eye on this YouTube channel for more videos just like this one coming your way real soon. Thanks for watching. Have yourselves a great day. Cheers.